Um, yes, good morning. So uh, my role at uh, Moodle is I'm the development team manager, um, but I spend a lot of my time doing development. Um, and a heavy focus at Moodle is on automated testing. Uh, and the reason is we're making the core product that everybody else uses, and uh, we need to make sure that everything that goes into core is of the, the highest standard. So in order to uh, ensure the quality of the Moodle core code, um, we put in a number of automated testing systems. They test different parts of Moodle in different ways. Um, uh, so we have unit tests for functional code and, and things like that. Uh, but we also have this very cool system for automated testing of actual browser pages, um, which is what I'm talking about now. Uh, so uh, a typical Moodle site looks something like this. Uh, and what we're looking at is sort of a picture of the makeup of the code on any one's particular Moodle site. So you would have a whole bunch of code. Um, uh, which is just core Moodle. Uh, but then you also have other things as well. So you might have plugins that you've installed from the plugins database. Um, you might have local customizations. Uh, people, uh, you might want a custom theme or uh, some change in the behavior of the way that Moodle works out of the box uh, that you're willing to maintain. Uh, and then you also might have local bug fixes. So if you find a problem with Moodle, um, you might fix it locally um, and send the patch back to us, hopefully. Uh, but you'll still sort of apply that bug fix to your site before um, you wait for us to integrate it and test it on our side, which happens um, sometimes. So all of these extra bits of code, every time you change something in Moodle, um, a change could be a customization, a bug fix, a new plugin. It could even just be a admin setting change. Um, perhaps relating to some other system or something like that. Uh, but every time you change something in Moodle, uh, you take a small set of customizations and then you add one small change uh, and you get a much more complicated, bigger set of changes. So and that's because all the changes interact with each other um, and it becomes sort of exponentially more complicated the more changes you have. So the way to manage that is through a change control process. Um, which might look something like this. So I've written some change control processes in the past and I've seen quite a few. Um, and they're usually very detailed uh, and very complicated. Um, and I mean, this is not a real one, but it's just to sort of demonstrate how pedantic the change control processes can be. And that's for a good reason, because um, you, you want to test everything and make sure you don't break Moodle when people are going to submit assignments on the last day and things like that. Um, it's very important. So uh, people's deployment environments um, usually have, uh, hopefully, have at least three. Um, uh, you might have two uh, if you're saying you're testing everything and then deploying it. Really, I think you need three so that you can actually test the deployment process for changes as well. So um, you would uh, develop something on a testing or development server, uh, get it ready, get it approved, and then um, that would be moved to the staging server. Someone would test it again to make sure that it was moved correctly and it's still behaving uh, in combination with any other changes that you might have made at the same time. Uh, and then when that's approved, you would send it on to the production server. So this sort of shows that process. Uh, the thing is that the code could fail at any point and then it would have to go back and you would restart the process from the beginning. Um, uh, and really, this is just all about ensuring that you're not going to be putting untested changes on your production server. So uh, the first stage of testing is where somebody who's requested any kind of change um, needs to test that the change that you've made or a developer has made actually achieves the outcome that you were looking for. So. Um, uh, it's not just sort of does this thing work, it's also does, does this thing work nicely, do we want, do we, are we happy with the user experience um, and exploratory testing, different browsers, different combinations of settings and, and things like that to make sure that yes, we definitely want this change on our production server. Now, 
uh, once you've deployed it onto your staging server, someone then also has to go back and check that it's still behaving the way that you're expecting it to. And when it's used in combination with all the other changes which might be uh, included in um, an update, uh, that it's still doing what you want. And so you might have, this is sort of an example that I found <coughs> on, the, on the internet of a uh, manual test plan where um, it's very detailed sequence of steps that somebody has to go in and perform on multiple browsers um, and, uh, and then at the end of the test they, they write some comments and they say whether this is working correctly or not. Um, now that's very time consuming. Uh, it's also a bit hit or miss uh, because as clearly as you can write the testing instructions, there's different people who can read and interpret those testing instructions in different ways. Um, so uh, you might end up writing a test uh, and because it wasn't very specific, uh, two different testers might either pass or fail the exact same test on the exact same server, um, which uh, gives you, it's not really what you want. You want 100% reliability in your testing and so you can say whether something is correct or it's not correct. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know that I need to explain this one. Um, <laughs> so now, um, now we get onto what B hat is. Uh, so uh, perhaps if I can have a show of hands of who's actually heard of B hat in Moodle. So it looks like about a third of you. So hopefully, for the other two thirds of you, um, I'm trying to convince you. Uh, not to learn everything about B hat now, but I'm trying to convince you that you need to be using something like B hat to in your change control process and that you're going to go away and find out more about it. This is a B hat test. So um, the language of a test is English. It's not code. Um, the, the tests are written in sentences so that a non-technical user could come in and read the text and understand what the test is trying to do. Um, and also, once you're used to the syntax, uh, it means that non-technical people could write the tests, uh, which is very important. So it doesn't have to be the developers that write the BHAT tests. In this particular example, we have a feature. So every <coughs> feature is basically it's um, one thing that we're testing. So in a change control process, that could be uh, an ID, include an ID number for a change request or, or something like that. And the first section is just informative, so um, the text in there could be anything you like, but when you're looking at it later, you'll appreciate it if you're sort of including enough detail to understand what the test is about. Not how it works, just what, what the change is that you're testing. Then you have a background section, which uh, from a clean Moodle install, this is how you create the courses and the users and the activities that you need in order to do the test that you're after. Um, this, uh, it's using a bit of a shortcut syntax there, so it doesn't quite look like English. Um, uh, but you'll, once you get used to BHAT, you'll definitely want to use the shortcuts instead of uh, writing them all out. But then this scenario is an actual test. Uh, so. This is the bit that um, is very easy to understand. This will open up a, a new web browser. Um, it will follow links in the navigation, um, change fields in a form, click on buttons. Uh, it can interact with JavaScript. Um, anything that your actual browser will do, um, you can click on and interact with in BHAT. Um, and it just looks like English. It's like, I should click on this button. I should see this. I should not see this. And this is what it actually looks like when somebody runs a BHAT test. So it sort of opens up the browser, uh, does all the steps, and then if anything fails, so if it's looking for some text um, in the page and it doesn't find it, uh, it will fail immediately and it gives you a big red failure. Um, now that failure can be uh, built into a other systems so that you can get reports on running entire tests. 
Um, this particular test goes for about five minutes. Uh, we wrote this when we wrote Atto, um, which is the text editor in Moodle. So this test, automated test, goes through and it tests every function in the Atto, every single button, to make sure that it works correctly. And we can run that on every single browser that we support um, and just verify that nothing, any change we make to Atto hasn't broken anything. Is while you're waiting for that, is the time to complete that an educational performance, possibly? Like if you've got the same test running twice in different hardware environments? Um, we're looking at using it for performance testing a little bit now. There's other more complicated ways to do that. Um, so, for example, you can uh, run a test and then you can record um, all of the interactions from that test in a file uh, and replay it to test, do load testing and performance testing. Um, but, I mean, we haven't set that up. We have different tools for performance testing um, in Moodle at the moment. Um, so, on to Moodle. Uh, we use this a lot. So, in Moodle we have almost a thousand scenarios and each line of those scenarios is called a step. Um, so, we have 36,000 steps um, uh, and that's growing almost every single day uh, and it gets longer and longer. So, we run these tests uh, continuously. Uh, we have um, integration process uh, which means that we can, as soon as we make a change to Moodle, um, we will, if that fails a test, uh, we get notified about it. So, um, so now, if you're using automated testing in your change control process, um, uh, things behave a little bit uh, differently. The first manual testing where somebody who's requested a change uh, and they need to verify that the change does what they expect. That still needs to happen. Um, but the second part, once you've approved the change, you can automatically have a robot come in and test that change on your staging server. Um, but uh, testing that change once is, uh, is good, but every single time you make any other change from that point in future, because this test is added to your test suite, uh, it will get rerun on all of the browsers that you have set up in your testing environment. So, that's just showing that. Now, to find out more about how to set this up, if you're working with a Moodle partner, um, you can ask them. They may have already got some automated testing happening in their uh, change control process, hopefully. Um, but if not, you can ask them about it. Uh, there's lots of information. So, what, at Moodle, we have an integration server, which is at integration.moodle.org, uh, and it's public. You don't have to log in. Anybody can go there and see the status of all of our automated tests at any time they want. And we have continuously running tests on that server. Um, and so, for example, just in the Moodle master branch, it takes four hours for us to run all the tests. Uh, and that's running the tests in parallel. So you can actually be running, um, I think we run three parallel uh, tests. So if we just ran them one after the other, it take, would take 12 hours to t run all the tests in Moodle. And that's just for one branch. So we have that exact same structure set up for um, at the moment, we're running tests for 2.7, 2.8, 2.9, and master. Um, now, the code that we use to manage all of our tests is uh, a tool called Jenkins, which uh, continually executes all the tests and gives us reports on whether they're passing or failing. Um, and all of the code that we're using uh, to configure Jenkins is available on that GitHub account, which is linked there. So that's information you could pass on to developers or um, uh, partners to go in and see how we've done it and copy our examples. Okay, um, so <coughs> that's it. I hope everybody's uh, interested and uh, they're going to go and find out more about BHAT.